What's up, folks? It is once again Dr. Remy LeBeau. I am here in the X Lair, and today I have a very special version of Storm. This is the Punk Storm statue produced by Bowen Designs, produced in 2012, um, sculpted by Mike Cusinelli. They did an amazing job on this statue. Let me give her a quick twirl so you can see how amazing she is. Look at this beautiful piece. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at that. Great, great mohawk, great everything, great, great. Look at that beautiful statue. She's a beauty. Um, this is number um, 120 of 340, folks. There's only 340 of these that were made. Uh, this was actually made to order. It was a made to order website exclusive. So what that means is that for a small window of time, Randy Bowen and company, the company being Bowen Designs, on their website, bowendesigns.com, um, temporarily puts a statue up for order for like two weeks, gives a deadline, and essentially if enough orders are, um, are, are made for the statue, then it gets produced. If not, then it doesn't get produced. And so this was one where they got enough orders and I think, you know, it was, I think maybe the cutoff was, I mean, the I don't exactly know what the cutoff is, what, you know, between either, you know, it get a statue getting a green light or not. Um, but obviously this got it. But given that it's 340, um, you know, that, that's probably very close to the cutoff. So uh, because that's a very low addition size. So essentially we have a statue now that is beautiful, that is of a, po a popular character. It's done in a really great way. And there's only 340 it, uh, uh, um, of these statues in existence, making it you know, one of the most exclusive statues of Storm ever made. And um, eventually it's going to make it a huge collector's item because people like myself that are huge Storm fans and also fans of this uh, version of Storm um, are going to get a hold of her and we're not going to want to let go of her. So, you know, when um, supply outweighs demand, you know, the equilibrium price just skyrockets. That's just the way basic economic theory uh, works and basic economics in general works. So uh, if you haven't gotten this beautiful lady, I suggest you guys get on eBay and start uh, bidding on her now uh, before you know it becomes impossible or it requires you to take out a small you know, a home equity loan in order to get her. That would be unfortunate. But in the end, if you do get her, then you know, they're, they're, that would actually be fortunate because she's really cool and she's a really great statue to have. Um, so uh, this version of Storm represents, uh, you know, Storm and sort of like, this, this, like around the 1980s, like a, a 1980s era, you know, in which um, she actually went through a period where she had lost her powers and she also became leader of the X-Men. Who will lead them? Uncanny X-Men number 201, a classic iconic um, uh, uh, issue in which uh, her in her punk look and Cyclops kind of battle it out um, to see who's going to be the leader. And actually, this is the issue in which um, Nathan Christopher Summers is first uh, introduced. Side note, Cable's first official appearance, essentially. Uh, so this is actually a really important issue. And I remember being like a young collector and always seeing it in the comic book shop. And it was always kind of expensive, so I never actually bought it. And uh, so I was really happy to finally get it as an adult. And love it, love having it. As you can see, it's like in a frame, so I like, I have it up on a wall along with a bunch of other comics. But you know, here, here, here she is with um, the statue and the here and the comic. As you can see, these this would make a really great display if you if you wanted to display her with uh, just this comic book. I think it would look very nice. Um, so uh, let's look at the statue itself. Uh, it's got the classic X base. It's, it's got, what's really nice about the X base is that it's mostly black, but when you get to the actual X, the X itself kind of has like a grayish hue to it, which is nice. And then the cutouts of the X are red. So it's just, it's a nice X base and it's actually a little more elevated than your standard version. Um, then you have the pants and the, um, like the tight pants and the boots and the sort of like the leather vest. And I think they're all supposed to be kind of leather and they've got kind of like this bluish sort of tint to them, like an aquaish kind of tint to them. Um, so it's, it's just a really nice choice and it makes her look really like tough and like, and bold and like, oh, and the gloves are also um, of the same color. So 
I don't know. It just works really well. Um, and then she's got the really cool kind of belts, the two belts, like very like 80s sort of looking uh, uh, accessories, like kind of crossing her, her navel, which is sort of like I, I'm pretty sure it's it's supposed to be kind of like the X and X sort of um, sneak into the design of the statue where normally, you know, in an X-Men costume, you would have an actual X. This sort of captures that X, like, you know, sort of, um, you know, demonstrates like the fact that she's an X person, X man, uh, X woman, uh, without actually having an X man costume on. I, I think it's like a, I think it was intentional. It's like a really nice touch. I love when they do that in statues where they kind of sneak in some X elements into the statue without, um, uh, there actually being like, uh, you know, X, X elements in the statue. So that's really nice. Um, they did a really great job, obviously with the torso and the, and like the tube top, the great tube top looks great. Um, her arms look great. Um, they, I remember, um, online, a couple of, uh, a couple of collectors when this statue was being sneaked and when, uh, Randy was kind of putting in the final touches to the statue, um, uh, individuals had mentioned she should have the armband because she didn't initially have like the the studded armband. So, so Randy like you know he's he's very receptive to like fans online, um, and specifically on StatueMarvels.com. That sort of seems to be where where he interacts with fan with fans the most. Um, so there you know that that's where that's where that detail was sort of advocated for by the fans, and he responded to that by putting it onto the statue, which is very cool. And you can actually see there are a lot of panels um, in X-Men comics that show her with that leather armband. So uh, it's it's a it's 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 a really nice touch. And it just reflects how how sort of fan conscious Bone Designs is. And and that's that's what is sort of partly at the heart of what makes them such a great uh, statue company. Um, yeah, you know, wielding the Marvel license with much, you know, um, care and responsibility with with great power comes great responsibility obviously not only did peter parker take that to heart but also randy bowen randy bowen also took that to heart so thank you again uncle ben thank you for your sacrifice <laughs> um so she's got the really cool sort of um collar the studded collar as well adding that extra punk uh element to uh the statue and then of course her face i mean you can see close-ups of her on my blog post um it's just the face is just gorgeous like her features are beautiful and just just everything about the face is perfect and then she's got like little pearl earrings which are nice she's got the nice little eyebrows and just like the lining around her eyes is just like impeccable the the paint job on this thing is impeccable like i have no complaints about it you know generally you'll see at least online by um various collectors they'll notice like flaws on statues um, that will be subtle and sometimes will be prominent throughout like an entire production run. Um, I did not hear anything on this statue because there isn't anything on this statue. Who, like whatever company actually produced, like actually mass produced this statue um, in China, which is where they're made, um, did an excellent job. It might be because she was beautiful and they actually were in love with her and gave great care to her as they were creating her. Or it might have been just that, uh, you know, there, it was a small production run, you know, 340. So they they weren't trying to rush it because there weren't that many to do. I don't know. This is a variety of reasons why statues come out good versus not, you know, who knows? Um, and then the Mohawk itself is just perfect, man. It's just like sculpted so well. Um, and then they kind of shaded it with, you know, kind of with some like uh, light blue and black elements. And I don't know, it's just perfection. Just a perfect Mohawk, just all around. This is Punk Storm. Um, in all her glory and she also has her eyes whited out which is very cool um, so you know either it represents her as having her power or it just represents her as just a powerful sort of person um, however you want to look at it you know I know that that for a large period of time in which she actually wore this outfit she did not have her powers because Forge actually um, accidentally shot her with like this depowerizing ray or something I think that was intended for Rogue, but it actually hit her accidentally. And so for a long period of time, she didn't have her powers until like, I'm not going to get into the details, but she didn't have her powers for a very long time. And she, But she was Punk Storm, and she still had 
you know, so much great um, weight to her as a character uh, because she's just a powerful character overall, which is why, you know, as a kid, you know, as like a teen or whatever, she was like sort of extolled as like a god um, in sort of like an African tribe that she lived in. And then and then later, you know, she becomes a leader of the X-Men. And then after that, she becomes, you know, she marries a uh, Black Panther. So she becomes the queen of Wakanda. Now she's back in the X-Men and she's like the headmaster of the um, Jean Grey School for uh, Higher Learning. You know, it's like, I mean, the lady demands respect no matter what context she winds up in, she winds up in, in life. So it's really cool. And what's actually even more cool is that um, uh, although this punk look sort of kind of, you know, eventually went away in the, I think it was the late 80s or the early 90s, like now... You know, in 2013, um, maybe like, I don't know, three or four months ago, she cut her hair again. She chopped it off, like I already mentioned. Like, she chopped it off again. It was actually an interesting issue of uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, I think it was, where I think her and Wolverine got it on. They got it on. What's up, Wolverine? Mm-hmm. Storm gave him a little bit of loving. And, that, and, then she, and she also asked him to, or actually we... We think that's what happened. It was implied. It was never actually revealed that that actually happened. But if there's a Wolverine and Storm romance in the, in the horizon, I would love that because I think they would be a great sort of couple. And and there was this really great episode of or two episode story arc in the '90s cartoon. It was called One Man's Worth, which was sort of kind of like the Age of Apocalypse story, but not really. In which in which um, uh, I think. Uh, so Bishop's adversary goes back in time and kills Xavier, and then in the future it's all like dystopic, and um, Storm and Wolverine are together, and like they're together, and then they're they're brought into the past to try to stop. Um, I forget his name, but he's got like green hair. Anyway, and I think Mastermind was in the. I don't know. I forget the details. I have to watch them again. Ooh, great! I'm gonna watch them again. Um, great excuse to watch some more X Men cartoon. But uh, she, I think she actually might have had her punk. She might have had a mohawk in that in that in those two episodes as well. Um, so, anyway, they have this great romance in that story, and and it, and it worked really well. Like, and I, and it, you know, it always kind of bugged me that kind of she was always kind of in the sidelines when Wolverine was always kind of lusting after Jean, and you know, there was the whole Jean, uh, uh, Scott, and Wolverine love triangle thing. And it's like, wait a minute, you got this beautiful creature Storm just like kind of hanging around, like. I don't I don't really buy that like everyone's sort of in love with Jean and not in love with Storm. I, don't, I never bought that. So I would love to finally see kind of Wolverine and Storm kind of getting it on and maybe that leading to something more permanent because I think they would make a great couple. Yay. Anyway, so uh, there was a story in Wolverine and the X-Men um, in which it's implied that they get it on and... Um, Wolverine, bomb chicka bomb bomb on. That's what I mean by on, and um, and Wolverine uh, actually shaves her head again into the mohawk. So now she has a mohawk look, and and you can see it in the uh, Uncanny X Force Volume Two series, which she is now a part of, which she's now the leader of, which is really exciting. I'm really excited for that series. Um, and actually, I think she's finally like making kind of like a reemergence as an important character. In the um, in the in the X Men uh, current X Men sort of stories because I think I don't know like so I got back into X Men about three years ago and she wasn't really important then and I think it was because she was kind of married to Black Panther she was kind of like a wife I don't know and she was just kind of like in the background I don't know it's just like it just seemed like an injustice you know because she's such a powerful character and she and 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 like she demands respect in all the stories given you know, all the various titles that she's been given throughout the, you know, her existence as a character, like, she deserves respect, uh, you know, by Marvel. <laughs> and I think there's just enough Storm fans out there that that we all believe that she should always be a prominent um, figure in the X-Men world and always kind of be, you know, central to a lot of the, the important stories that are going on. Marvel, come on, don't ever ignore Storm again. Give her the... Give her the kind of uh, the kind of attention she deserves, or else she's gonna punk you, cause she's punk storm. What's up? All right, folks. Um, so I think that pretty much covers uh, this introduction 
of a beautiful uh, statue. Again, um, there aren't many of these. Uh, if you have one, you are one of the lucky people. I'm obviously one of the lucky people because I have her. Um, if you don't have her, I suggest you try to find her. Um, you know, soon, not tomorrow, not next week, but you know, within the next year or two, I would try to, you know, get your hands on her if you're interested in getting her because, like I said, there's only 340 of these in existence. Um, uh, actually, Sideshow made a version of Punk Storm, also Sideshow Collectibles, which was a dud in my book. They, they've had opportunities to do great statues by actually engaging and making them, and they seem to some they seem to more often than not like 60 to 70 percent of the time kind of miss the mark unfortunately they almost had it with that statue but they missed the mark and it's one quarter scale too i don't know if they had just gotten like mike Cusinelli to done it to to, to have uh, sculpted it i think it would have came out amazing and it would have just been a hot seller and at least i would have had one in my collection you would be seeing a video of her as well because you know the more punk storm the better if you ask me but i mean the point is the point of all this, my little um, my little speech just now, is that you aren't you aren't gonna find many Punk Storm statues out there that are worth getting. So if you haven't gotten her, go after her, go after her, and I wish you luck. I hope I hope you get a good price for her, and I hope you find her. Um, well, thank you once again for checking out my video uh, and my blog post. I have uh, plenty of photos of her on there. Um, my blog is X-Men Statues of Future Past dot blogspot dot com. Uh, my YouTube channel is, channel is officially, as far as like YouTube goes, Dr. Remy LeBeau. Um, unofficially, the actual name is Dr. Remy LeBeau's Exler. What's up, Exler? And thank you for um, you know checking out my video and everything that all the support you you all have given me. And I have plenty more stuff coming up. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of like just going back a bit and just kind of finally, uh, you know, giving the quality uh, attention as far as like, you know, videos that I'm producing that I produce uh, to the statues I've already covered just to kind of make the quality uniform across everything I've done so that in the end, when I have the entire collection catalog, like anyone that finds the site, you know, is able to kind of see all the statues available in the best quality possible. It, not only in the introduction but also in the, in the pictures and and hopefully you know get the kind of experience that uh, you, you would want as a collector and as a budding collector who's interested in kind of finding out what's out there um, and, and, get, and getting an accurate idea of what is out there you know what's important about what's out there and how to go about getting more and more and more <laughs> anyway thank you all once again and as always x in the box because ain't nobody checking me i will see you all very very soon take care guys bye bye